So this is week seven, week eight, chapter seven. It's about the uh, alternating current and the mixed current, ACDC, not the music band. Although that was a big thing in the beginning of the century, alternating current and the mixed current. So when we did the multimeter, we did practice how to measure AC and DC. And you've noticed if you, swap, if you switch the lead, you'll get a negative number. You notice that? Yeah. If you look at the battery and you put different poles, you get a negative number, which means it's either positive or negative, which means that the current is going in one direction only. Uh, so we'll talk about alternating current, power distribution, what you expect to have in a building, whether it's residential or commercial, and uh, what kind of voltage system do we have? I'll also explain what, what does single phase, uh, phase mean and three phase mean. So it's, gonna, it's going to get a little bit scientific. I'll try to explain it, but it is important for you to understand because in some commercial buildings, you will see uh, 220 or 110 three phase for ACs. So we'll talk about the differences between AC and DC. What are the differences? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Why do we use it in AC or DC? How alternating current is produced? Did anybody go to Niagara Falls? The American side? Niagara Falls, guys. It's only DC. It's okay now. It's, it's, uh, I highly advise you to go and visit Niagara Falls. It's very beautiful. And it's one of the seven world wonders. And it also has a museum for Nikola Tesla because he saw this tremendous amount of power being wasted. And they installed a good power station over there to use Niagara Falls <coughs> to generate electricity. And from what I know, it supplies electricity for most of New York, some other states. And since uh, Niagara Falls is in the borders between the US and Canada, they share the power. So if you go to Niagara Falls after sunset, they close the side seams and they divert the water to go from the falls into the turbines. The whole night they will produce electricity out of Niagara Falls. It is the basis for a lot of hydropower because it's a lot of power being wasted, not wasted, but not utilized. So we'll talk about how is it produced, the difference between single phase and three phase power distribution system, and uh, what kind of system you expect to see in a house or in a uh, factory. We'll talk about the basic power distribution. So most of us know that the power comes from the socket in the wall. If you go a little bit further, you'll go to the control panel in your house. Usually that has how many volts? 220? 220 coming into your house. In case you want to run a dryer, you want to run an oven, you'll have a line directly to the control panel. Uh, for going back from the control panel, where does it get power? It's a wire from your house all the way to the substation. Every small block will have a small substation. Those substations go to another big substation for the <coughs> neighborhood, not only the block of the neighborhood. And it's going to be around like 10,000 volts for each one of those uh, lines coming out. So there's an actual line coming all the way from your, from the substation to your house. Sometimes it's uh, an aerial wire, which means it's hanging over a pole, or it's buried underground. There are, again, advantages and disadvantages based on the load, whether we have aerial cords or underground. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, what are some of the common voltage systems? And it's very important so you do not mistake the neutral with the ground and the power, the how much power you get in. Uh, so current, again, we all agree that current is the flow of electrons. So we have a flow. Let's say this is uh, copper. We have flow electron from one source to other. What is the charge of electrons? Negative. Negative. So it will flow from negative 
positive continuously as long as there is something that will produce this flow. Same with water. If you have water in your pipe in your house, but there's no pressure, nothing pushing the water through, it's not come out, it's not going to come out. Correct? Another example, if you have a big barrel, sealed, full of water, you poke a hole in it. Will it leak? stop with those big uh, water tanks or drinking water tanks you always have to have a vent in the top otherwise the water is not going to flow so there has to be some kind of displacement you have to push in something to get out something same with electricity we have the wires they're conductive they have electrons but they're not going to move until you displace those electrons so we need a source and we need a conductive material. You need a pressure coming to your house and you need the wires. So the first step is uh, the current. The flow goes in one direction. Alternate <coughs> current it goes back and forth. And the whole idea came from the same source. So how do we produce DC current? So DC current we talk about uh, the commutator. The magnet. Commutator switches the poles of these uh, two lines whenever it rotates. So we thought of rotating currents, and uh, we only supply a flood of negative charges. So if we will, if we were to look at this current in a, a graph, it will be always the same. A twelve volts. Constantly, at the same time. <coughs> That's direct. Yeah. So it's going to be negative at the same time, same direction. So uh, that was the the main power source for all light bulbs and all electrical appliances in a house, and uh, it was invented by Thomas Edison and the progression of introducing uh, alternators, not alternators, uh, generators. So we are going to generate constantly power in one direction. So the problem that happened with the DC is that it wouldn't go too far. You require a lot of pressure because what did we say? If we have a wire, what's the problem with the wire? Wrong wire. Longer is the more. Exactly. So there's resistance. This resistance increase by distance. You're gonna have a wire three miles long. If it drop one volt every mile, by the end if it produce like a thousand volts at the source at the end probably is going to be 500. So there's a lot of losses. Also it increases by temperature. Also material. So at the beginning, everybody, every house that wanted electricity, they have to have their own generator next to the house to generate electricity, otherwise the electricity will be lost along the line. So, uh, Nico, that's what, yeah. So, temperature will affect the resistance? Yeah, it will increase. That's why your computer does not perform as fast when it's hot. So, most of the joints don't perform as well when they're hot. That's why in the lab, when they want things to conduct very quickly, they cool it. 
Uh, there are some super computers that require to have radiators there, but water radiators for the CPU to, to perform this way because we have conducting small uh, currents to the wires. Don't most of your gas cars have cooling systems? Huh? just came with the idea of alternating current. Uh, and through some mathematical research, he realized that if we alternate the current from positive to negative, we can send it further without a lot of losses. I'm not going to go too much into the details, the math behind it, but he realized if we have a wire and we send the current, it's going to be plus or minus, the wave will push the current further easier. So if we have a wire and we keep sending the current up and down, it will go further without a lot of loss. So if we look at the look at it graphically, this is zero. It's going to go with plus 12 and minus 12. So we alternate the current. And you also realize that if we use the same idea, without a commutator, with the same rotating aspect. The current is naturally is produced by plus or minus. And we talked, we watched that video and we saw the current is actually produced by plus or minus. Instead of just picking up one charge, we can pick up two and send them over. So, uh, I'll stick to the board. So we have the same rotating and we have a pole here that will take whatever comes through and it's going to move to be plus and minus. So what you're saying is they cancel themselves out so it just will Not necessarily, no. You will send one at, one at a time. It's like uh, having a wave. So you keep going back and forth. It is going directly. So it's like having a roll when you, you're waving it. It goes further. And the idea behind it, not to get too scientific, but if I look at anything that is rotating, even this is zero, this is 180, and this is 275, 360, this is the actual coordinates, right? If something is rotating, Eventually, it will come to the same point. So this is my rotation. If I take the complete rotation, I'll get more use out of the cycle. Did everybody take algebra? Yeah. We also. Long time ago. You're familiar with the term sine and cosine? A little bit, sort of. We'll, we'll look at it later. But uh, this is the basis of rotation. Anything that is cyclical can be transformed into a wave. So if you look at it, this is the same cycle. Sine of zero, going back at 90, down at 275, and go, go back to minus one. So if you put it in your calculator, Sine of zero, that is zero. Sine of one eighty, that is zero here.
Oh. That's, that's, that's 275. Yeah. Sign 275, 270, what? Where's the part coming from? Minus 1. Zero, 1, 0, minus 1. So we're getting here. 0, 1, the top, 0. So this is going to be my, my 0, 90 degrees. how we convert rotational movement into linear. Every wave in the world is sinusoidal waves, radio waves, microwave, radiation, photon, what have you, whatever you can send over the air, any kind of wave is sinusoidal wave. Something cyclical that goes into linear and uh, the translation for that from radial to linear. Uh, why do we need to know that? Not that much, but you got to understand where is this coming from? Where is this snake wave from? Uh, what is the frequency? How many circles do I have in one second? That's the frequency. So the frequency here, what is the frequency of all electricity? 60 hertz, we measured that, right? 60 hertz, which is 60 cycle per second. So this, this wheel is rotating three, uh, 60 times per second, which, is, which means well, how many times does the, the rotor of the generator turns based on that? 60. So you're getting 60, that's 60 times the generating 60 hertz. So it goes back and forth. This is our flow. And we're going to take both. We should be taking only the <coughs> negative, we're taking negative and positive. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still don't get like, what that is. What do you mean? The, like, <coughs> good question. This thing? Yeah, like, I don't get nothing. What am I doing? Okay. This is. <laughs> My, <laughs> this is my rotor for, we looked at a motor, right? If we look at a motor that we want to generate, this is my rotor. Inside, this is the, the iron core, and these are the, the casing that, that absorb the current. So if I bring a motor, So this is a motor. If I put power into this line, it will turn, right? Theoretically, if I turn this fast enough, I'll get I'll get uh, electricity. So this is my the inside, which is turning, and the inside is the whatever is receiving the current. And this is designed to become a motor, not an alternator. An alternator is a motor that does the same thing in reverse. You turn it, it gives you power. You put power, it will turn. So it goes back and forth. But it has to be designed to do the whole, uh, both, both things. Is it clear? A little bit clearer? So this is a rotor and a motor. And this side here is the, the stator. It's whatever is sitting the other end of it. You see this, this guy and core inside. But this is a motor. If we have an alternator, it's going to be the outer core. Or probably it's going to be the, the core. Yeah. Um, I got a question on your waves you got going. Yeah. There. Plus 12, minus 12. Yeah. Now, I know, how, why does that relate to like 90 degrees, 180, 360? Isn't that like a frequency? Good question. Very good question. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get where you're getting numbers from. This is a good question. This number is. Hypothetical. 
could be anything depending on what you want to do. Could be uh, 110, 480 volts, and this is your peak. So you're going to generate power. So here, it's going to be less than that. Yeah. This is 10. Here is going to be zero. Okay. So as you go up, your power goes up. The first wave. Yeah. And the peak is your peak. Okay. And here is all, your negative peak. It's going to go up all the way and down all the way. So it's peak voltage. We're going to go over what is peak voltage. And we actually cut it with the peak voltage or the climbing up. So you start with zero, go all the way up and all the way down. And uh, as the, we have two poles, if you turn it, as you get it further from the, from here, so when you reach this area here, let's just say there's, a, there's another commutator in here. When they, when they touch, probably this is zero, the further they go, if it's here, probably it's going to be the maximum, which is 12 volt. As it goes further here, it's going to be less, and increase, it goes back and forth. So the next wave, after you hit your peak bottom, yeah. the peak high, the next wave, now would it be the same, or would it, because it's the longer? Yeah, it'll be the same. Okay, well, yeah, it'll be the same. I don't know if it would be the same. Yeah, it's how further you go from the, from the contact. It's a simple concept. I don't want to go too much into detail, but it's good to understand these things because they will lead to other concepts. Uh, most cars we have, and all equipment is AC, because this is what we get in, in our house. And for here, cooling is mostly AC. So the 24 volt volts you get from the thermostat, is it AC or DC? It's AC. 24 AC. The only time we deal with DC is when we have batteries. Okay? No, thermostats have batteries in Yeah. But the batteries for the internal circuit. Good question. Yeah, it could be it, it could be confusing. When in doubt, go measure. Is it AC or DC? And your month mirror will tell you whether it's AC or DC. Uh, we said about the cars are DC. What about the photovoltaic panels? Are they AC or DC? Cameras? No, the photovoltaic uh, panels. AC converts to DC. DC. By the way, oh, DC, DC converting a little AC. Why, why do you think it's uh, DC? Because it's, it's nothing's rotating. It's a reaction. So it's, it's chemical, it's constant. Same as a, as a battery. What about uh, thermocouples? DC. DC. So it's, a, it's something that's coming from one plug in one valve. It's not going back and forth. So AC equipment is cheaper and more uh, trouble free than DC. For most likely it is, and your alternator in your car is alternating current. That's why it's called alternator. And it has a converter inside of it that does two things. It regulates the voltage and converts the voltage from AC to DC. When you say trouble free, like, you mean like it's more efficient or? You do not have to change a lot of parts all the time. Mostly for, uh, for alternators or for motors. I remember in the, the alternator back in the days you had to change the contacts or the brushes. Yeah. Every few thousand miles, you have to change the brushes. Most uh, AC uh, motors are brushless now. There is no need for brushes or something that actually retain physical contact. Uh, AC is also easy to produce. According to the book, it's easy to produce because we are utilizing the rotating, uh, rotating motion more efficiently. What else? Any questions about AC and DC? Do you understand why DC is constant? It's a reaction, as Tim said, constant reaction. Uh, AC is rotating, alternating from back, back and forth. And your car has uh, has uh, an alternator that's producing AC, which means you have to have a regulator and a converter. So, if you look at your, open the engine, look at the engine, the AC is connected to a belt to the motor. So what happens if you rev the engine? The engine is doing at 1,000 RPM. Does it mean that the alternator is going to go faster? You increase the amperage, it'll produce amp voltage. Huh? You increase the amperage and voltage if you make that sure. energy. So what happens? What does that blow up the motor and the equipment? It's going to rectify that regulates that. It's going to regulate it. Voltage regulator. 
And sometimes the voltage will go and it goes back. If you hear the engine, you see the, the light is going back in those dimmers. So the engine flows back and forth. I saw it was blowing a battery yeah. before it yeah. was like 18 volts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that means the regulator inside is not responding. And at high speed, when you rip the engine, probably it just drank too much power that it, uh, it blew up the battery. <laughs> and uh, also, when you have, uh, when you have uh, an empty battery, you just jump uh, inside the car, you want to hit your gas a little bit so to help the battery charge. Uh, so what we're going to hear is electrons flow that alternate back and forth, represented by a sine wave. That's a sine wave here. Everything is a sine wave. So depending on the, on the, on the frequency, frequency changes from 60 hertz to whatever, megahertz, gigahertz, radioactive hertz. So it's a lot of cycles. Cycle, cycle, cycle is two alternation, changing direction. This is a complete cycle here, represented by back and forth. Frequency, the number of complete cycles per second. We're good at this concept. Make sense? Okay. This is a sine wave, and this is a small representation of what I tried to draw in here. The north and south pole. So going back from north to south, positive to negative. And these are the signs for each of those uh, coordinates. 90, 180, 270. So here, we're starting at zero, going up to 90. C, D, and here we're going up and down. One alternation per cycle, and this is a complete cycle. We go back to where we started and change direction. So is this a cycle? No, it's a half a cycle, it's half a circle. This is a complete cycle. Put these together, it's a circle. Sure. Oh, so like, it was like 60, it was like 60 hertz, and it goes like, Back and forth, yeah, 60 times. 60 times. Oh, okay. For one second. Make sense? A little bit? Okay. You don't need to know all this for your for your job, but it's good to have a concept of what's going on and why is it called hertz and what's happening with those cycles. And that will also help you understand motors and the loads inside the motor. Uh, I think that's what I have to say about sound waves. I think there's a good YouTube video I'm going to show you here. Hopefully it will work. So if you guys uh, took any power plant, you took the power plant course, probably you'll, you've seen, uh, you built it, I think Bill got it to a, a visit to the power plant in Ludlow. Uh, it's supposed to be next week, yeah. yeah. So you have some, some idea of what's going on. Yeah. What time? <laughs> Electromagnetic induction. That is, whenever the flux passing through a circuit changes, an EMF is induced in it and a current begins to flow. 
The direction of induced EMF is given by Fleming's right hand rule or Lenz's law. Fleming's right hand rule. Stretch the forefinger, the middle finger, and the thumb of the right hand such that they are mutually perpendicular to each other. If forefinger indicates the direction of the magnetic field, thumb indicates the direction of motion of the conductor, then the middle finger indicates the direction of the induced current in the conductor. Lenz's law. It states that the direction of the induced current is such as to oppose the very cause producing it. Components of an AC generator. An AC generator consists of a magnet with concave cylindrical poles, an armature, and a current collecting arrangement. The current collecting arrangement consists of clip rings and brushes. Armature is a soft iron core on which a coil having a large number of turns of insulated copper wire is wound. Magnetic poles are concave and cylindrical. The concave poles produce a radial magnetic field. Slip rings. The ends of the armature are connected to two slip rings. They rotate along with the coil. The slip rings are made of metal and are insulated from each other. Brushes. There are two brushes. B so those brushes are still uh, in practice, if you have a, we do a Dremel, or you do the handheld uh, drill, you still have brushes. So, because you're not running all the time, so the drill is not running all the time, after a while you have to change the brushes. Is that the, just the two contacts? Yeah. No, it's, yeah, this, uh, this, uh, the friction will wear out, but breaks, especially if it's running on DC power. That's why they say it's, uh, it's better to have the AC to have to get brushes. One and B2 made of carbon. One end of each brush is in contact with the rotating slip rings and the other end is connected to an external circuit. Here the brushes are connected to a galvanometer. Observe that the brushes do not rotate with the coil. Working. As the armature rotates about an axis perpendicular to the magnetic field, it keeps on changing its relative orientation with respect to the field. Thus, the flux keeps on changing continuously with time. This change in magnetic flux induces an EMF. If the outer terminals of the armature are connected to an external circuit, an electric current flows through it. The deflection of the galvanometer needle indicates that an EMF is induced. Graphical representation. Observe the plot and the movement of the coil to understand the sinusoidal nature of the induced EMF. to explore. Explore and learn the workings of an AC generator. Play around with the frequency and the direction. Observe the deflection of the galvanometer needle and the change in the nature of the graph. This will help you understand the workings of an AC generator. to David's uh, comment about why is the peak is at 12. So 12 is at my peak. That's a really good question. So when we want to get the power, we how long do we stay in the peak? Not a while. Just touch the peak and come back. Two peaks. So there's something called the peak voltage happened at 90, which is over here. The effective voltage, the one that we 
want to plan on having is happening here. Uh, 45 degree angle. Which is somewhere around here. This is my effective voltage. This is what I'm going to calculate. Uh, what is uh, 0.7? If you put uh, what, uh, if sine zero is zero and sine ninety is uh, one, what is sine forty five? So that's my effective voltage. So if the peak is point, it's uh, 12, my effective volume is, uh, so for here, for this example, I'm gonna go with uh, peak voltage. You don't have to understand this very fully. I mean, it's not going to be applicable for you in the field, but at least you understand basic electricity and how does it work. This is my effective voltage. Uh, voltage current systems available at several different voltages and with different current characteristics. <coughs> so, if I, if I were to compare electrical current to water in a house, what would be my Pressure. Yes, if I want to compare compare my uh, electrical current and production to water flow in a house, what will be the pressure? If water has pressure, okay. it's going to be voltage. Voltage is going to be the equivalent of pressure. So I'll write it down. So if we have water system. Pressure, we have flow, we have uh, consumption of taps, taps, let's say taps. So pressure is my what? Voltage, right? Yeah. Voltage. Uh, what is my flow? These are loads. Okay. These also are loads. What exactly is taps? Huh? Taps. What is like, like a water tap, like a faucet, oh. like a, a water tank. Something that taps into the water and takes some of it. Currents. So we have the same pressure. What is the pressure coming from? It's supplied by the municipality, right? Can we have more flow than in a house? Where? Yeah. You can have two or three or five flows. Now we can have more currents with the same pressure. That's going to be our phase. So we can have three phase, three currents in one volt, one pipe. We can have a wire with three currents in. And we'll talk about that on Monday after we recap these slides. Three of the same? Yeah. I'm going to have three waves riding this voltage, one after another. And why is that? Exactly. 
I want more power, I want more more things. Okay. So will it still, yeah. still add up to like one? No, it's not, uh, it's gonna be three, uh, three, each one of them is one time. Yeah. It will just give you more power and more torque. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit this on Monday. Thanks.